describe what your all things being equal, if a fourth class committed an honor offense versus, a, say, a second class or a first class, how might you deal with that um, in, from an instructional or and from a disciplinary role? Well, one thing I tell cadets right from the very beginning is the further you move away from fourth class year, the less likely you are to survive an honor offense. Uh, we have a honor uh, concept here, and uh, it's one that we endeavor that everybody understands because it's critical in our overall education, training, development, and inspiration of leaders of character. And um, so we want to make sure they get it. If a fourth class has a problem, comes up with some infraction uh, in honor, uh, we're going to have to look at a couple of different things. First of all, how, how egregious is it? You know, they don't automatically get a pass. Um, you know, some of the problems that that cadets will run into sometimes is they will have an honor offense and then they'll lie about it, which just compounds the problem. Mm -hmm. So let's say it was a cheating situation, and then when they're confronted on it, instead of instead of admitting to it and growing from it and being remorseful, they'll lie about it, and then we find out that there's a lie. So that, so that becomes problematic in the adjudication of a case like that and whether or not we make a decision to, to keep that cadet. Um, if the cadet is uh, retained, then, um, you know, of course, it's, gonna, it's class one fence, and uh, you get a series of demerits, you're going to have to do marching tours, you've got restrictions, the individual will be placed on, uh, most likely, on suitability for service probation, um, most likely recommended to the uh, superintendent for suspended disenrollment, and, uh, and then the individual will be put on honor remediation, which is where I require them to select an 04 or above that has to be approved by the assistant commandant of cadets, who they will engage in a conversation with about honor and what honor means. What, not only what honor means to our institution and our organization, but what it means in terms of carrying out your responsibilities as a commissioned officer in the United States Coast Guard. And then based on those conversations, they have to do journal entries. And then that journal goes through the mentor, goes through their company officer, company chief, goes through the academic honor officer and the commissioned honor officer, goes through the assistant commandant of cadets and to me. And then we evaluate that honor remediation as part of their suitability for service probation. For a second class cadet, uh, now of course if it's a second offense, people are going to be gone. So this, we're talking about potentially first, a second, second class cadet with a first, first honor offense. offense. Again, maybe not likely to survive um, because they've been under the code for a couple of years, excuse me, under the concept for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. And that's something that we have to take into consideration as well. If you've been doing well for a couple of years and then, and then something happened where you, you fell off track, we have to evaluate that. Uh, if the individual is retained, they'll go through a similar uh, punishment and remediation that I just, just spoke about with regard to the fourth class. But it, it's very difficult for a person at second class level to survive an honor offense. I think that explains your philosophy and probably what your successor will do as well and what's implemented here. That's kind of the message that I, I observe here since I, in my role. Okay. So.